It's your million dollar chance of a lifetime, weekdays on TV9. Siskel and Ebert review Roy Scheider caught in a murderous trap in 52 pickup. Eric Roberts falls for Rosanna Arquette in Nobody's Fool. Taipan is an adventure saga set in colonial Hong Kong. And the sacrifice is what one man offers to prevent another world war. It's all coming up next on Siskel and Ebert and the Movies. <laughs> strapped to the chair. Being shot in the chest five times. And this accountant, he was my gut to kill her. Roy Scheider's been fooling around with a topless dancer, and now he tells his wife and Margaret that he's being blackmailed. That's the setup for 52 Pickup, one of the new movies we're going to be reviewing this week. And I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. I'm Gene Sisko of the Chicago Tribune. The title 52 Pickup refers, of course, to that old joke about a card game where you throw the cards in the air and someone else has to pick all 52 of them up. In the movie, Roy Scheider plays a successful businessman whose life is a house of cards that has been thrown in the air by blackmailers who have videotaped proof that he's been cheating on his wife. When Scheider refuses to pay them, they murder his lover, frame him, and then up the ante. Rather than pay the ransom, Scheider decides to go after the trio of thugs one by one and his journey takes him into the drug and porno world where he interviews a prostitute who is friendly with a young girl he'd been seeing. Leo has a couple of pals. A white one and a black one. Honey, I didn't say nothing. <sighs> it's gone with those guys there, huh? The white guy. Smooth talker, businessman. You trust him, Doreen? What's his name? <laughs> For some reason, I'm not getting through to you. Anne Margaret plays Scheider's wife, and after she gets mad at him, she agrees to help him. And here they combat the most brutal of the extortionists. How come you come busting in here when I'm going to hand you $50,000 in cash? $50,000? 52. That's the deal I made with Alan. Didn't he tell you? That was Clarence Williams III. Remember him from TV's Mod Squad a long time ago? Haven't seen him in a very long time, and he's a pretty good villain in this piece. In fact, a number of the performances are very good, especially Roy Scheider and John Glover is the leader of the extortion gang. He is creepy and smart. The movie broke down, though, for me in two ways. One, I thought its story was highly contrived, too many loopholes in behavior. And second, I thought the violent sex in the film was much more than I cared to stomach. And that comes from the same guy who last week said he liked the violent, sexually violent, something wild, and I also liked the sexually violent Blue Velvet. But this picture, I thought, really lingered over its violence, and that turned me off, even though I did enjoy the performances and the general outline of the story. It's a close call, but I wouldn't recommend 52 Pickup to a friend. Well, I would recommend it to a friend, and I thought it was one of the best movies in a long time by John Frankenheimer, the director, who That's has been true. through a bad period, That's and this true. is really his comeback with a vengeance. And I love John Glover's performance as the villain. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that so many modern thrillers forget, mm -hmm. because they get a big star as the hero, That's and right. the whole movie is about the star, and the villains are just these people that come on and go through their rote and right. then leave and so forth. This villain is a great villain. In yeah. fact, there were three other uh, three villains in the movie altogether. Yeah. Glover is the best one. Right. And he's so evil and so convincing in his evil and mm -hmm. so slick and yeah. so intelligent, as you said, yes. that that makes the movie work for All me. Right. Roger, would the movie, would, do you think the movie would be helped if they simply cut out 
some of the sex and the, the explicit sex, I think it would be helped tremendously. I, I would recommend it, for I think example. what they're trying to do is be true to the author of the novel, Elmore Leonard, who a lot of people think is the best mystery writer in America today, and of course, in his, in his books, yeah. the plots are complicated, just like this plot that you thought I'm not was too about complicated. Com not, not complicated. The violence is always very bizarre and very strung out, and I think yeah. they're trying to get that same feeling. It's one thing... This guy is a really slimy killer, and no, you've got to... That identify how slimy he is to make Scheider's reaction yeah. more what, convincing. What's on the page can be one thing. When it's put on the screen, mm -hmm. it can go overboard. And that's all I'm saying is I think that they went overboard and ruined what, in many other ways, is a good well, film. Well, there's one thing I know when I see a thriller, it's that I'm not going to be thrilled with a modern thriller nine times out of ten because they haven't had any imagination. So mm -hmm. this time it worked for me, so maybe mm -hmm. I'm giving a pass to some of this other stuff. I don't know. Okay. I would recommend it. Our next movie is named Nobody's Fool, and it stars Rosanna Arquette as a small-town waitress who's trying to recover from the shock of being abandoned by her boyfriend. She acts sort of goofy all the time in this film, maybe as a cover-up for the much deeper emotions that she feels because she was pregnant when the boyfriend bailed out and she had to give the baby up for adoption. Now she gets some advice from her best friend, played by Mara Winningham, who thinks it's time for her to make a fresh start in life. There's a summer theater in the town, and Eric Roberts works in the backstage crew. Arquette meets him in the park, and she starts to like him. But she's still hung up on her old boyfriend, and in a flashback, she remembers her rejection. I thought we were going to get married. You still look, don't. You told me you love little babies. You I told do. me you love my meat pot pie. Now you're telling me you want to split 50-50, and you don't Dude. feel ready to cap in your chips? Stooley, settle down. Well, it's too late. You're just a cat. I'm sorry, they're cat. Stooley, people are staring at us. <laughs> pop your pop. Oh, come on. Roberts tries to set her at ease by confessing his own shortcomings. You know, when I was three years old, I strangled a white kitten to death with my bare hands. At nine years old, I cracked up my favorite girlfriend's skull with a steel pipe wham. She was out like a light. At 13, I listened to my mother's employer, Mrs. Bessel, choke to death while I was living nurse on the bathroom floor. At 19, I was a certifiable dope dealer and my best customer. Whoa. It's okay. It's okay. I got it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And so the whole movie comes down to, is this true love? And if it is, will she drop everything and move to Los Angeles with him? Look, I'm leaving town right after the show tonight. If, if you decide that you want to go with me for some unknowable reason, just, just, just be in my place and we'll split. Rosanna Arquette creates a nice, winsome, lovable goofball in this movie. In fact, I like her in almost everything she's done in the movie. She has a, a real appealing quality about her. And Eric Roberts is good, too. He's a little more toned down here from his usually very intense performing style, which is sometimes really too intense for some of his material. I like their relationship, but what I didn't like about Nobody's Fool was the way the movie used flashbacks in order to gradually reveal the story of Arquette's earlier boyfriend and that pregnancy that was so traumatic for her. If the story had been told from beginning to end, I would have had a lot more sympathy for her, but with all those flashbacks, the movie waited too long to tell me why I should really care about this woman, and as usual, what flashbacks in a movie often call attention to is really just the style of the writing and the directing. A movie like this depends so much on sympathy for the characters that the filmmakers and their style should try to remain in the background. Nobody's Fool has some good stuff in it, but it's a disappointment. And even though I like Roseanne Arquette, I have to vote thumbs down. I vote thumbs down completely. There wasn't much I liked about it at all. And if you'll take out those flash flashbacks that you object to, and I think properly so, mm -hmm. I think they would have had time to build more interest in the characters. Mm -hmm. I thought the characters actually were kind of flimsy. She's just generic girl, small town girl held back. Mm -hmm. He's just, well, he has a more interesting past than the kind of character we've met. I mean, he's had a troubled past. He's mm -hmm. extremely violent, and he does break out into, to, again, mm -hmm. that Eric Roberts gets caught up in being violent too much. And if you had taken the time out, we don't really care about this other pregnancy and this other character that comes in. Just tell the story straight, as well, you said. Well, you would probably care about it if it began at the beginning of the movie, oh, because then okay. you could see where she came okay. from. But here, we see her acting in a very peculiar manner for a yeah. long time before we know exactly why. That's and it. Then, then, of course, that kind of sabotages the end of the movie, because once we now care for her yeah. and want her not to be hurt again, we're asking ourselves, is this the maybe, right guy? She, maybe she shouldn't go off with this guy. He seems to be a little bit weird himself. Yes, he is weird, and I, I'll, I'll tell you, 
I was, I thought that the movie was very flat, traditional, backstage romance, and the guy takes the girl and rescues her. And frankly, she uh, should have been given much more interest in her character so that some guy doesn't have to save her, because that's sort of chauvinistic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Especially if it's Eric Roberts who's going to save him. Yeah, mm -hmm. and especially Roseanne Arquette, who can save herself. She's been stronger in other movies. Coming up next, a review of Taipan, the epic story of the founding of Hong Kong as a trading port. They're all forbidden in China, but now they can land here, trade here. Oh, it's a glorious night, Mary Sinclair. Sorry, girls, but I gotta let some of you go. These cows are out of work because you're eating Chex brand cereals without milk. Come on, those little spaces were made to hold milk. So please, don't eat Chex without the milk. Oh, dear doggy, I have kibbles. Look, this is Purina kibbles and chunks. Kibbles taste better when they come with chunks. Purina brand kibbles and chunks dog food. Better with chunks? <laughs> better with chunks. Glad cling wrap. When we say cling, we mean it. The good news is that this past September, the UW-Stevens Point attracted more students than at any other time in its history. But the bad news is that we're forced to become more restrictive with new enrollment. Don't you be disappointed. Don't delay. Don't be left out. Come to our next campus preview day. Don't you be disappointed. Join us at the Stevens Point Campus Preview Day, 8.30 a.m. on Saturday, November 15th. Sierra hearth stoves and fireplace inserts have changed the way American homeowners shop for wood stoves. Reasons? Superb performance, classic style, and evolutionary construction. The Sierra promises satisfaction and an assortment of fine accessories. Snuggle up to a cozy warmth this winter. See the Sierra at Marcel Specialties, your wood-burning headquarters, the area's only certified solid fuel safety technicians, 1810 6th Street, Wausau. The next film is Tai Pan, based on James Cavell's best-selling novel from the 1960s about the Europeans who founded Hong Kong as a trading port, using opium in exchange for tea and thus corrupting the native Chinese population. Now that story might have made a terrific political movie, but the movie Tai Pan, the title refers to a trading baron, is really nothing more than a landlocked pirate movie full of fights and threats and drunken parties and womanizing and generational battles amid crashing <laughs> rainstorms, and all this fury is a crushing bore. Australian actor Brian Brown plays the Taipan who loves a native woman and who she gets angry when he flirts with another woman. The scene is sort of a bad Asian version of Gone with the Wind. Men. Men, not men. Men! I am told men's the place in best song winner of your prize. And you stand there and eat up her bosom. Eventually, the film reduces itself to a big fight between two men who want to control Hong Kong, played by Brian Brown and John Stanton. The impending rainstorm is supposed to add drama, I guess, to the fight. And there's a lot more rain than that. At that point, I'd like to see him bring out mops and just clean, <laughs> hit each other or clean up the mess, one of the two. By the time that fight comes around, we have been laughing at the overblown action in Taipan. Roger, you'll get your say in just a second. I'm sure you can think of things I forgot. The waste of the Chinese locations and all the foul doral about who is going to marry whom. Hong Kong is supposedly one of the most exciting places in the world. While well, the Hong Kong Travel Association ought to ban the showing of this movie, which does nothing to arouse our interest in Hong Kong's past or present. It's a major waste of time and money. Our time, their money. This is one of the most ridiculous movies that I have seen probably in five years. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think back. Probably since Inframan, the one about how uh, I want to point out that you were, were released on I know, you were out of town on Howard the Duck. So I did miss Howard the Duck. This movie is unbelievable. One of my favorite scenes involves Mary Sinclair, that girl who comes out from London and becomes such a successful prostitute right. that when the one Taipan's notes are called in, she is, uh, but just from her savings account, she's able to advance him enough money to buy all of Hong Kong, which right. in inspires that fabulous line, 
you're not the Mary Sinclair I knew. Yeah. They, I mean, they, apparently what happened is the entire British Empire went out there and spent 40 years in bed. Right? And at the occasionally they got up for a costume dance or a sword fight. Right. And the other amazing thing is none of these guys age. You right. notice that? I, I mean, didn't notice you see that. Brian Brown at the beginning, they're shelling the Chinese coast. It's about 182 or 184. Right. Forty years later, he's still dancing around on the parapets uh, in this big sword fight. Meanwhile, he's got a grown son. I mean, he must be about 80 by then, and he hasn't, not a single whisker has changed. It's Roger unbelievable. Will be, Roger will be back with more comments about this movie <laughs> on other shows. It will take other shows to complete your review. When we come back, we'll review one of the most extraordinary films of the year, The Sacrifice, about a man who offers his own life to stop a nuclear war. Get into hunting this season at Bill's Tackle Box in Wausau. Most shotguns are at special sale prices, and you'll find a selection of hunting clothing that'll knock your socks off. Let us create the gun of your dreams with a rifle scope sling combination that'll save you money. Register to win a 20-gauge shotgun in the Big Buck Contest. Everyone who gets a buck gets a prize. And be sure to admire the mounts in the second annual Whitetail Deer Expo. It's all at Bill's Tackle Box, 809 South 24th Avenue, Wausau. When the fall season comes to town, with it comes anniversary sale time at Carpet City Warehouse Showrooms, the biggest store-wide event of the year. And to make it extra special, we'll install our best-selling style of carpeting for only one penny per yard. Let the professional staff, which includes two interior decorators, assist you. 90-day financing, free measuring, free estimates, and guaranteed professional installation. Now, during Carpet City's anniversary sale, Wassa and Wisconsin Rapids. Over 1,300 people are seriously injured or killed in Wisconsin house fires each year. Don't let it happen to you. Find out if you may qualify for the Wausau Fire Department's smoke detector program. The Wausau Fire Department will furnish and install smoke detectors free of charge to qualifying senior citizens, the handicapped, and certain low-income families living within the Wausau city limits. Call the Wausau Fire Department today. You too may qualify. A public service message brought to you by the Wausau Fire Department and TV9. Whose idea was this anyway? Yours. Well, it's good for your hips. Whose hips? Your hips. Lunch. Mm -hmm. Vegetable soup. Lots of vitamin A. Mm. Good for the body. Who's body? Now that you're watching your bodies more, so is Campbell's. We've added even more vegetables to our vegetable soup to keep making our good soups better. I got it. Now that we're eating more vegetables, less sit-ups. No sit-ups. No sit-ups. <laughs> Campbell's soup is good food. And keeps getting better. Our next movie is named The Sacrifice, and this is a strange, intense, and haunting movie. I saw people who actually broke down in tears after seeing it, and I knew how they felt. The movie is an international production directed by Andrei Tarkovsky, a Russian now living in Paris, and it was shot on the island of Faro in the Baltic Sea between Sweden and Russia. That's the same island where Ingmar Bergman shoots most of his films, and the bleak landscape will look familiar if you've seen some Bergman films. The movie stars Erland Josephson as a man who lives a quiet, closed-off existence on the island, and one day he experiences what he has long dreaded, bombers streaking overhead on their way to begin World War III. now almost enters into this man's own soul, where he performs an examination of conscience to see whether his own sins and failings are being punished. Then he offers a sacrifice, his own life, to buy back a few seconds of the precious time of the universe, which would mean that the missiles had never been sent. I think Tarkovsky is trying to do a very interesting thing here. He's not suggesting that that man can change the world with his sacrifice, but what he is suggesting is that this man's whole world exists within his own mind and that the nuclear destruction is the result of mankind not being as good, as noble, as honest, and as fair as it should be. So in a way, the man is asking for a second chance for himself and for all of us. The movie is not simply about nuclear war. It's about the war between good and evil in one man's soul. It's almost as if the movie says nuclear war comes out of the evil in our soul. If we can cure our souls, we can clear our destruction. The sacrifice is difficult and powerful and very, very effective, and I must say, 
It's also very long. It might be an ordeal for some people to sit through. I got into it. I got into it, and I got out of it, and I got into it. It's two and a half hours long, and I think the film is quite uneven. There are some very beautiful things in there. There's a beautiful monologue by Erlen Josephson uh, when it's, it almost plays like a great Bergman film. Mm -hmm. But then they bring in other side characters, members of his family, neighbors, maids, and all that, and I thought all those characters were point, pointless, really had nothing to say, nothing as eloquent, and I felt that the film broke down every time we got away from this one man. There's some beautiful images. There's a gorgeous shot of snow and leaves being blown across by the wind, and it's almost like a shot of the earth, this uh, 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 firestorm going right across and wiping out the face of the earth. The film is great be beauty and great monologues, but then it has a whole bunch of other stuff in it, which makes the film very uneven. Well, maybe you ought to say something about Tarkovsky, who directed it. I've seen uh, at least three of his other films, Nostalgia, right. Solaris, and Andrei Blub Rubloff, that yeah. film about... Uh, uh, the building of the giant bell in the Middle Ages, one of the greatest films ever made. Tarkovsky's films are always long. And one of the things I think he's trying to do is make his films so long that we lose touch with the person that we were when we came into the theater, in a way, that we come entirely into his universe, and he completely absorbs us with these images, including the downtime, mm -hmm. including the boring time, so if it is boring, so that by the end, he's got us reduced to the point where he can give us the message that he's trying to give us. In other mm -hmm. words, it's the opposite of entertaining us. Mm -hmm. He's trying to absorb us. Yeah, well, Roger, I got the message, because in his, in his opening speech, it's very clear what he's talking about, and, he yeah. has, and the nightmare of the... Uh, of the destruction of the earth, I got the message very early. I'm just saying that um, let's take an, an editing to this film and we would have a great film. We would have a great film if we reduce the characters. Well, I certainly can recommend it anyway, especially to anyone who finds that kind of subject matter interesting because it's not just a propaganda film, it's very thoughtful. Coming up next, our special home video segment, and we're going to review two new releases, including an American thriller and a surprising smash hit from Africa. <laughs> Diagnosis, congestion, runny nose, sneezing, ah, bad cold. No kidding. Introducing the future of cold and allergy relief. New contact 12-hour caplets. So advanced it helps stop the runny nose Sudafed can't and works twice as long as Actifed tablets. New 12-hour caplets. Perhaps nothing will ever beat contact's relief. You're welcome. Until there's a cure, there's contact. Dry, skimpy diet breads, fear history. Never again will I sacrifice this soft, fresh taste to save calories. And I will not sacrifice these full-size slices. I don't have to, because this is a light bread. Introducing Wonder Light. So much soft, fresh taste. It's a wonder. Had just 40 calories a slice. I never was the sacrificing type. New Wonder Light. The wonder of light breads. Crafts Trading Center Marshfield is proud to announce that they are now the Fleetwood Pace Aero Dealer. Brand new 1987 models are now in stock. Get 10 and a quarter percent financing on 87 models only, and 9.9% .9 financing on new 86 models, and up to 14 years to pay to qualified credit. There's also a good selection of pre-owned motorhomes currently in stock. See Crafts Trading Center, now Center Wisconsin's dealer for Pace Aero by Fleetwood. Crafts, Highway 10 East, Marshfield. Better quality, better prices. Rolla Home Surplus, you're on a roll. Rolla Home is now open for business at their new location, and their savings are bigger and better than ever. Receive 20% off on mattresses and foundations, 20% off swivel rockers, and 20% off interior oak panels. Drapery material is starting at just $1 per yard, and carpeting is starting at just $3 per yard. Visit Rolla Home at their new location, 301 West McMillian, just north of the dental clinic. Better quality, better prices. Rolla Home Surplus, you're on a roll where we take a look at new releases just out in your local cassette store. And the film this week that caught my eye is one of the most successful foreign films ever to play America. It's The Gods Must Be Crazy, a fanciful yarn from South Africa about a primitive tribe finding a Coke bottle and beginning to worship it, and how that worship changes all their lives. It brings the natives in contact with white society, for one thing, and that's where the film breaks down for me into ordinary slapstick, as in this scene. Funny. funny, not to me. I found the film split into two parts for me. 
The original story involving the guy who finds the Coke bottle and his tribe was very funny and very well done. But the white people, I think, were just fools, and their humor, routine slapstick comedy. I wish the movie had stayed with the Coke bottle and with the tribe. I enjoyed this movie, and I thought it was fun, but what I've never been able to understand is why it's become such an amazing phenomenon. I mean, I'm, this movie's been playing for five years in Paris. It's know. been playing all over the United yeah. States, week after week and month after month, mm. and... Gosh, I don't know. I mean, it was I a pleasant think, enough movie, but what's the big deal? The big deal is people want wholesome entertainment, and then it's being proved again with Crocodile Dundee. Mm -hmm. Wholesome entertainment, mm -hmm. and an older audience will go and see it, and that's why so they now we can it. have the Crocodiles Must Be Crazy. That could be a real big hit. Yep. My choice in the video store this week is a sleeper from earlier this year, a movie named Hard Choices that didn't get nearly as much attention as I thought it deserved. The movie stars Gary McCleary as a teenage kid who gets caught when his brothers commit a crime and kill a policeman, and in jail, he's visited by a youth worker played by Margaret Klink. The movie takes a startling twist when the woman decides to help him escape. Okay. Does he have a gun, Bobby? It's on the wall. Go get it. Just wait a minute. Go get the gun. A lot of movies start out unpredictably and then gradually sink back into stuff that you know is going to happen. Hard Choices starts out like a well-intentioned TV docudrama all about the plight of underage prisoners, mm -hmm. but then it explodes into a series of absolutely unexpected scenes in which that youth worker turns out to be a lot more complicated than she seems. As played by Margaret Klink, it's a totally original performance. I loved it. Hard Choices is the movie. And it should be around this week in the video. Store. I liked it, too. It mm -hmm. caught me totally by surprise. Yeah. And how often can we say that about movies? We you can guess the plots all the time, it seems. This one fooled me. I liked that in a movie called Something Wild that came out recently where I couldn't follow what was going to go on. And uh, she gives a terrific performance. Let's say her name again. Margaret, Margaret Clank. Margaret Clank. Because yeah. so often people get nominated for Oscars because they were in hit movies right. and they're big stars. And a performance like this is ignored. just totally ignored. Let's recap the reviews of the movies on this program. Gene and I split on the thriller 52 pickup. I found it gripping and compelling. He thought the story was implausible and needlessly violent, even though the performances were fine. So one thumb up and one thumb down. We were in agreement that Nobody's Fool was a love story that alternated between being too cute and too violent, so two thumbs down. We hated even more the mm. wasteful, absurd, epic Thai pan. Let's pan it. Two more thumbs down for a film that gives Hong Kong a bad name. And finally, a split on the sacrifice, the visually stunning story of one man's attempt to keep the world from self-destruction. I think it's a great film. Gene found it spotty. He thought it was better looking than it was acted. So uh, I really am really strong for... The Sacrifice, well, and also 52 Pickup. Okay, and I'm tough to please. Me That's too, it for God. this week. Next week, we'll return with reviews of four new movies, including Streets of Gold, with Klaus Maria Brandauer as an exiled boxing champion trying to make his way in America, and Harrison Ford's new film, The Mosquito Coast. That's next week, and until then, the balcony is closed. Schaefer & Sons classic pianos, organs, guitars, and drums. Instruments for all your musical needs. From Schaefer & Sons. Raisinets and goobers are playing everywhere. Starring plump, juicy raisins and great golden peanuts. Both now feature creamy milk chocolate. Curel moisturizing lotion. Most women agree, Curel ends dry skin. Stetson, the gift that fits the man. Stetson cologne, a cologne that's easier to wear, hard to resist. Stetson fits. Shell Saturday at Taco John's, two soft shell tacos for $1.29. There's never enough money to make ends meet. It seems my wife and I are always arguing. I've been trying to cut down on my drinking. I'm afraid.
afraid I might lose control someday. Financial and marital problems are among the leading causes of child abuse. That's why the Salvation Army offers so many important family services. Counseling parents, providing daycare, and in some communities, manning a special hotline. By reaching out to those in need, the Salvation Army is fighting child abuse before it happens. The $25,000 Battle Royal Series comes to Wausau Newman High School on Friday, November 14th. Already signed, 375-pound Earthquake Ferris, Greg Gagne, Alexi Smirnov, Gordienko, 470-pound Jerry Blackwell, Brad Rangins, and 7-foot, 9-inch, 590-pound giant Silo Sam. For the first time ever, a mixed six-person tag team match featuring the Midnight Rockers and Despina Montegas versus Playboy Buddy Rose, Doug Summers, and AWA Women's Champ Sherry Martell. Get your tickets now and be there! Cal Ehlers and Bob Roars. Newsline 9 Sports. They're great.